Hello and welcome to the Custom Question Builder, My Lab Math and Statistics Workshop, the virtual version for ICTCM 2020. So a quick overview about the Custom Question Builder. First of all, you do have some time savers that you can use. Um, you can certainly use questions from other textbooks rather than start making new ones with the Custom Question Builder tool. We have an enhanced book search tool for that purpose. You can do things like modify learning aids and such things as numeric answer tolerance. So again, you may be able to use an existing problem without having to make it custom. You can also use a show work option instead of creating a special question for that purpose. Um, you can use existing video questions to make sure students have done certain things you wanted them to do. Or you could make an existing custom question with an existing problem that students need to solve but embed a video that they watch first. Um, editing existing questions could be more simplistic where you just remove part of a Pearson question, you edit some text, you insert a video or a table or a link to a document, or you change algebraic constraints. Or you could create your own questions from scratch. There are four types, true-false, multiple choice, short answer, or essay. There are static questions where you don't need to worry about algorithmic values. Basically, once and done, the numbers don't change, students get the question, that's the way it is. Or you could get into working with variables. Um, if you do anything with a graph, of course, or image, we're going to remind you to look at alt text and accessibility issues. Um, we're also going to take a look at some practical implications, like how it works with coordinator courses and where to find more information. So again, we're going to take a quick walk through here with the PowerPoint and then look a little bit at the product live. Um, we will also direct you towards a lot of materials for training purposes that are already loaded online. So we do have tutorials for beginners as well as advanced users. At the end of the advanced user guide, there's an extensive list of functions and, and codes that are already in there for your use, um, as well as some videos. Up front, we're going to mention this right away because everybody always asks, and that is, what do I do about Flash? So the custom question builder is Flash-based. So you may find, of course, it's not going to work in Chrome. Um, currently, I use Internet Explorer or Firefox. By the end of 2020, there will be a different platform for the Custom Question Builder tool, so you can certainly use it on um, other browsers at that point. I do not have a demo of that to show you. It will be done with Adobe Air, um, and it will no longer be Flash-based. The questions we make are not Flash-based, so you are able to continue to use this tool to make questions for your student. They are not Flash-based. You are fine. So again, um, first of all, using questions from other textbooks, you can click to change to another textbook and then locate the title you're looking for. You can also search by objective or title to find those resources. If you search by objective, it'll tell you where in the other textbook you can find those objectives. For example, section 3.1. So then it's quick and easy for you to click to chapter, section, and objective and find what you're looking for. You can use up to 20 questions per assignment from other textbooks. It doesn't even need to be one textbook. It could be a combination of them. You can also make question level modifications. Once you've started to create a homework assignment above or quiz or test above the assignment questions you selected, you will see view assignment details. If you click that, you then have access to modifying learning aids, changing numeric answer tolerance or absolute value tolerance, um, doing other things like having students show work. So again, that can be a really helpful page. You'll notice too if you access the PowerPoint for this presentation, which is currently loaded on the app along with my name, that you will see links here that you can click on each of these for more information. If you choose to use the show work option, if you check off from the preview mode for students to show work, then you can modify how that's going to be scored from the instructor's perspective. Typically, I use something like 75-25 or 80-20. Sometimes I've done 50-50, but this would mean, for example, that students would get 75% of the question credit for getting the correct answer in my lab math, but the other 25% comes from me manually exploring the content. Okay, the show work student view. 
is also available for you to look at here and we do have a video for you to see about the student's view. Primarily when they're doing homework, they're going to see a highlighted show work box. They click, this pops up. The easiest thing for them to do, of course, is to just take a picture of their work and upload it from their phone. If they're taking a test, for example, you most likely don't want them to be taking pictures of things, so you may be asking them to type. For example, in my calculus course, I might have students compute average and instantaneous velocity, but then the show work might be their explanation of those two values, what they mean, how they're related to each other. But again, from a student's perspective, they do have this menu, and this video up here will show them how to use this menu and the different items here, how to upload, and so forth. Let's assume you're going to go into the product instead to edit an existing question. So you can remove parts of questions, you can edit text, you can insert video, you can change constraints. This is the custom question tool builder environment. On this particular screenshot, I've actually clicked to show the algorithmic values. So you can see all the variables here, what type they are, what the constraints are, what the current values are. Of course, if you click to regenerate the values, they would change because most of the questions that are in here are algorithmic. If you wanted to simply just insert a link, a video, uh, maybe a table, a document for reference for students, you're going to click insert and then choose the appropriate tool here. A lot of times it's a web link, so if you want to make your own like video question, you can take that video, click here, insert a web link, say to your students, watch this video, then solve the problem. That way you're encouraging them to watch the video, but they're not getting question for that, credit for that. They're getting credit for solving the problem. Editing constraints. As I showed you earlier, you can open this up and you can come in here and say, okay, I want this to be greater than one. I want this to be less than 10, or I want to change these. I want them to use values from two to 20. Um, notice here, this is integer value, but if you change something to decimal, you would have obviously infinitely more options. But you want to be careful when you change things like that because the rest of this problem is located here is in integer mode. So again, keep in mind when you start changing things here that you're going to want to preview the problem. Make sure it works the way you like. Give a regeneration of a couple of values to make sure you don't get error messages and that you're getting the type of question you'd like. Creating your own questions. If you click in here and you start typing a question, you do have a rather um, complex, um, rather comprehensive, excuse me, equation editor. This is not the same as working with Word. There are times, for example, like typing a triple integral with constraints that this is not going to work. If you have a really kind of involved question that's already been typed out, like something with a triple integral with bounds, or you've got a diagram, something a little more involved and you don't want to replicate it, you can always take an image picture of it and upload the picture of the question instead. That's a nice time saver. But most of the time we come here, we use the equation editor. Again, take a look at your menu here. You have derivatives, you have fractions, you have roots, you have exponents, you have subscripts, you've got summation, you have integrals, you have matrices, you have all your Greek symbols. So you can type in here and then click and it'll create a really nicely formatted problem for you. Again, on the left-hand side, you also have access to the graph tool to make like a you know Cartesian coordinate, the number line, pie charts, bar charts, and figures. You do, as I said, have four types of responses. So you have short answer, multiple choice, true, false, essay. For short answer, you actually have four steps in creating that answer. One is to select a rule, like is this an algebra, algebraic text answer? Is this going to be a um, integer problem? Is this going to be something that you're allowing multiple formats of answers or only the exact answer that you specify? And then you define what the value is. Is it a certain variable? Is it a certain value? You have options such as, do you want this rounded? Do you want it to have common notation? Do you want it to be, you know, um, delivered to students expecting that there's two right answers, that they have to enter both of them, whatever. And then step four, you can edit the feedback. So there's preloaded feedback, but you can choose to edit that. And you can even include algorithmic variables in that feedback. Whatever you choose to do, whatever it is that you've edited or created, always, 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 always click preview in the top left. Preview the question, work the question out as a student, check it more than once. I can't emphasize this enough. You also want to be sure to frequently save your work. Sadly, the custom question builder does not auto-save. 
And that's something that some of us learn by trial and error, especially if you're working on a longer question and you are working through a problem and you've been making changes, please make sure to save your work regularly so that you don't find that, oops, I just deleted the last half hour of my efforts. But save and also be sure to preview and practice. Some other tips, again, always save your work, especially when you're working on long problems. You can embed videos like we mentioned into an existing problem to make your own quote video check question. You always want to associate your custom question with a textbook or section and objective to make it easier to find. If you want to do like a multi right answer question, like I want students to choose A, B, and C, um, you can actually use and edit multiple choice answer blocks to make that happen. Um, you, if you do edit a publisher question, keep in mind the learning aids are removed. So sometimes I'll have faculty say, well, what can I do now? I really want students to still have some tools. So one of the things you might do is create a document, upload it to Google Drive, and put that link in the question, say, click here for a sample problem, or put a video in, like we said, and always make use of the preview mode. Believe it or not, sometimes the only thing I picked up from preview mode for a particular problem was the fact that my formatting didn't look good. That my, maybe I typed a dash thinking it would look like a subtraction sign and it doesn't. I need to go into the equation editor and actually use a subtraction sign so that it looks better. Managing multiple sections. If you are using coordinator courses, this is a great time saver. If you go into your coordinator course and maybe you created some custom questions, put them in assignments, they will automatically flow to the member sections. You also control the section instructor's rights to the custom question builder tool. So if you want them to be able to work with it and make their own, great. If you don't, you can control that. Please do keep in mind that if you change the menu items or some content page in my lab, after people have copied your course, that change will not filter down. But assignments, content, and settings will filter down. So the custom questions do as well. Accessibility, very, very important. When you're creating an assignment, um, you wanna keep track that you're using these questions with the screen reader tool. In fact, you can actually sort your availability by screen reader questions. If you check to use test bank questions, those are multiple choice and those are typically accessible as well. You want to make sure this assignment has all these little screen reader icons that you have an assignment that a visually impaired student could use a screen reader for exclusively. On your course menu, you also have HTML ebook. You want to have a direct link to that for students. Um, and of course, then if you're working with a custom question builder tool, you want to make sure that if you're adding any graphs, or pictures, images, that you have alt text included so that the system can read that to the student. If you need more information about accessibility, you can always reach out for additional training, but you can also copy this course ID at the top of the screen. That course is basically a training course. It's not a math course in the way that we normally would think. There are assignments in it, and they go from pre-algebra through differential equations, and they group together extra questions that are accessible. So if you're looking for more material for graphing rational expression functions, for example, or you're looking for more material for slope fields, you can open up an assignment and you can see where did she get these questions from? And then you can use those books in your own assignment. There are also training materials here, information about creating alt text, a recorded workshop, an accessibility guide, Pearson's VPAT, which is a voluntary assessment tool, and other resources. Again, this is not an accessibility training, and I understand that, but I cannot emphasize enough. You want to keep tabs on things like that when you're building a course or you're building resources for your courses or embedding media even, making sure that they are captioned. If you've got additional questions, you can always reach out to our disabilities team. You can also check our website for some information. Um, here I'm linking to the guides. I'm also going to show you where they are live in the product. And now we're going to do that. We're going to go live in the product. So just bear with me for a second here. And now we are in our product. So we're going to back out here to the assignment manager and kind of show you where to get started. So you can go to the custom question tool from one of two places. You can either A, click on create an assignment and click custom question, or under manage, you can click to manage custom questions. So under the more assignment tools, if you click manage custom questions, you'll click here and you'll see 
this list of what is already sitting in your course shell. So again, we can click here, create custom question, or under more tools, manage custom questions. Now again, it really matter, it really depends upon whether you're editing an existing question or you want to start with a brand new one. Either place, you're going to start here. We're going to click create new question. Now for this example, we're just going to go ahead and, and take a look at a question that already is in our course. Um, I'm currently working in Sullivan's College Algebra, and we're just going to pick an equation here. So we want to solve a quadratic equation, and I could choose to preview, or I could just click Next to take me right to the editing screen. So I'm now looking at the custom question screen, um, and this is simply a um, kind of a vocabulary question one, which I chose on purpose. So you can see here, um, here are the questions, the words that are typed in. I can click in here. This is a you know basically short answer kind of question, but again, if there were values, I'd be able to come up here and and preview and regenerate. And we're going to do that a little bit later. Um, just for a quick tour, again, if I wanted to insert a video here, maybe I wanted students to watch a short video about terminology and concepts with quadratic equations, I simply would need to come here and click Insert Web Link. If I wanted to change the format of the question or highlight something for students, I can do that. I have other tools here, um, basically, again, previewing and regenerating like I've talked to you about. An important link is clicking here on Help. If you click on Tutorials, that takes you right to Pearson's training site where you have the basic tool, you have the advanced tool, and you have videos. These have all been updated, even though this says updated 2017. This is from, this is when this page was updated, but these particular tools have been updated. There are some videos there for you as well. Now, if I did edit this question in some way, shape, or form, for example, I added a video and I now wanted to save this as a custom question, I would click Save and Exit and I would have a screen on which to do that. Now, this is currently associated with a textbook. I could always edit this link. Maybe I want to take a question from this book and save it and put it in another book. So I could say, you know what? This is actually going to be Martin Gay and I'm going to associate it with equations in her book, and I'm going to, um, oops, it's quadratic. I need to go to the right chapter, right? So I can go to quadratic equations in her book, and then I could go into solving equations, and then I could link it there, and I could click Submit. Once I've done that and updated this link, I could do anything else on this page, give my problem a name. This is the type of question it is. It's been preloaded, and then I can click OK. So again, because we're unable to have kind of a give and take time here, I really encourage you to visit these tutorials. Um, come in here, spend some time exploring the types of topics and examples and questions you can look at. For example, if we look at the advanced guide, you can see that there are questions about working through if then and adding graphs and doing figures and number lines and charts. And then if you click to the very end of the document, you will see that it does have some preloaded um, custom question builder template codes and shortcuts for you which will help you if you really want to get into the programming. Again, the easiest thing to do is to work with editing existing questions, using questions from other books, um, making static questions of your own, much less time consuming, a lot easier to do. I hope you enjoyed today's rather quick overview of the custom question builder tool. Again, please take time to explore those help tools, the tutorials, the videos, um, these guides and and reach out if you have any questions. Have a great day and thank you so much for your time today.